Hi, Peter Toscano here. I like that the Bible includes people who are sexual minorities, and they're not condemned. They're not merely tolerated. Often they turn out to be the most important people in some of the most important stories. Like, for instance, Ebed Malek. You know Ebed Malek. They didn't tell you about that in Sunday school, Sabbath school? I'll tell you. Jeremiah 38. Jeremiah is a prophet. I know, you thought he was a bullfrog. <laughs> a prophet of gloom and doom and had a nasty message that people didn't like. Uh, the king was sympathetic to Jeremiah, but the king didn't have a great deal of power. The people who did arrested Jeremiah and threw him into a prison cell within the palace walls. Actually, it wasn't a cell per se. It was a well, a cistern. They just tossed the old man prophet down there to die. Enter Ebed Malek. Ebed Malek is an official of the court, a Cushite from Cush, Ethiopian. Ebed Malek is also a eunuch, someone who was castrated probably before puberty. We don't know if this was something that Ebed Malek chose or was put upon Ebed Malek, but as a result, Ebed Malek, as a eunuch, retained a high voice had no facial hair, body hair, the muscles that come with testosterone, looked and sounded different from those all around the other men and women. Ebon Malek goes to the king and says, your servant's going to die. We need to do something. And the king was like, well, you know, my hands are tied. But listen, here's 30 men, fighting men. Go see what you can do. So Ebon Malek organizes a special ops rescue in the middle of the night, breaks into the palace, and Navy seals the prophet Jeremiah out of that cistern, out of the palace, liberates the prophet. And, and, and Evan Malek, master organizer, got everything that was needed to make this operation, including ropes and old clothes. Ebed Malek threw the old clothes down to the prophet and said, put these under your arms because we're going to be pulling you up and we don't want you to be injured during this rescue. And what we have here in this text is a black African surgically altered gender variant savior. And that is a story well worth telling.